Okay, so here I'm going to prove the power rule for derivatives, which says that if you have a function f of x, which is equal to x to the n, and in this case I'm saying n has to be a natural number, I'm only going to prove it for natural numbers. This, this theorem is, prove, is true for all real numbers, but here I'm only going to prove it for natural numbers, which means numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Then the derivative of that function is n times x to the n minus 1, which means I can sort of bring that power into the front as a coefficient, and I decrease the power by 1. And the way I'm going to prove this is using mathematical induction and the product rule for derivatives. So this is not your typical proof for the power rule. There's other ways. There's actually many ways to prove the power rule. And the reason it's not very typical is because the product rule is actually is typically taught after the power rule. So it doesn't really make sense to prove it using a rule that you haven't actually learned yet. So anyways, but it's, a, it's still a cool little exercise for induction. And so here we go. So the way induction works is we have a base case and then we have the induction step. The base case is just we choose, does it work for typically the lowest value, to n, in this case n equals 1, that's to the typical value. Does it work? Is the derivative of x to the 1, is that 1 times x to the 1 minus 1? So here we go, right? f of x equals x. We know the derivative of x is 1, just by the derivative of the identity function, or maybe you just know the slope of the line, y equals x is 1. And using the power rule, does this work? Well, f prime of x is 1 times x to the 1 minus 1, right? I just plugged in the values of n, which gives me x to the 0, which indeed is 1. So it does work for n equals 1. But now, for the induction step, we have to assume that it works for some value of n, uh, some natural number n, right? x to the n. That, in other words, the derivative of x to the n is indeed n times x to the n minus 1. And given that, we have to prove that it's true for the next natural number x to the n plus 1, derivative of that is, again, bring the power down to the front, n plus 1, decrease the power down by 1, n plus 1 minus 1 is just n. So in other words, we can use this in the induction hypothesis to prove what we want to prove. So here we go. The derivative, we have the function f of x, which is x to the n plus 1, and we can rewrite this as x to the n times x. Now, why would we want to do that, right? Now we have a product of two functions, and we can use the product rule. But remember, the product rule has the derivative of x to the n in it. And we are given what that derivative is, and so that's going to help us in solving this. So in other words, remember the product rule. It's the derivative of the first function times the second function, plus the first function times the derivative of the second, right? First derivative of the first times the second, plus the first function times the derivative of the second. Well, again, what's the derivative of the first function, x to the n? Well, we're given it. It's n times x to the n minus 1 times the second function plus the just the first function, so x to the n, times the derivative of the second function. And we know the derivative of the second function, x, is just 1. And so now what we have here on the left is n times x to the n minus 1 times x, right? We have two powers of x, and when we multiply things with the same base, we add their exponents, right? This has an exponent of n plus n minus 1. This has an exponent of 1. n minus 1 plus 1 is just n, so we just have x n times x to the n. Here, x to the n times 1 is just x to the n. And notice here, if we factor out x to the n, sort of factor it out to the right, just because it makes a little more sense, we're going to have n plus 1 left over, and you can see that the derivative here is indeed n plus 1 times x to the n. So what does this mean, right? We've proved what we want to prove, but what does this really mean? It means that if it's true for n, then it's also true for n plus 1, right? Given that it's true for n, it's also true for n plus 1. And we've proved that it's true for 1. And so by this, given that it's true for 1, then it's also true for 2, right? The next, like, n plus 1. And so we know it's true for 2. So given that it's true for 2, that means it's also true for n plus 1, 3. Given that it's true for 3, it's also true to 4, and this is kind of the idea of induction, right? If it's true for 1, then it's true for 2, then it's true for 3, all for any natural number at n, right? Up to 100, 101, etc., etc. And so that is our proof for the power rule for natural numbers. And there you go, that's our final answer.